Welcome everybody to Tales from the Tackle Shop Season 5 Episode Duh. 2. Number 2. And I think I've solved the audio problem. Let's hope so, eh? Yeah, but do you sound very soft-spoken again. I always am, aren't you? You always are, yeah. 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 Smooth. Smooth. And we don't look like we're in a Bedouin tent. No, in a teepee. A teepee, yeah. yeah. So uh, we've changed things around. So look, where's the other view? There's the other view. Look, there he is. There he is. Oh. Going to annoy everybody. Hopefully it won't get cramp either, eh? Well, we need to talk about that. Oh, really? How much crap did you get in the shop? A fair bit. Quite a few people said, oh, I used to get cramp. Yeah. I said, I think it might have been the chairs that hurt, give me cramp. I feel like they were tucked up behind my neck, to be honest. So, I've I've had to change the chairs. Yeah. For you. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you're an athlete. Yeah, obviously. The backdrop, because it annoyed me. The audio was actually a one-minute press a button solution. Like it always is. Like it always is. Hopefully, because I haven't actually tested it since I've changed it. So this is still a gain up in the lap of the gods. And also, everybody would have seen, I put a um, little post saying we had a technical hitch. Mm -hmm. So it was delayed. So this is going out Thursday. That's technically a lie because uh, I was fishing. So <laughs> we're now recording Wednesday evening. I was actually at Blagden um, fly fishing for pike. So that's pretty cool. Any big fish? No. no, no. Two days. Ah. Jacks. My mate Charlie had a 19, yeah. his PB on the fly, and I'll stick a little video in here. Okay, well that is my PB fly called Pike. Um, we've been jacked up until now. This one we worked out, so we'll work out exactly, but it's about 19 pounds. Um, very pissed off, so we'd be nice and quick. We're missing bite time. I can feel that Andy's glaring me down, <laughs> so we're gonna get it back. But there we go. Cracker. So that's pretty cool. So he was very, very happy. So he had a PB on the fly, but no, it was a lot of money. It's really expensive. But you've got to give it a go because we were told rumours that it's full of 20 and 30 pounders. Mm. No, it's full of 20 and 30 ounces. We're in a pike race. This is number 11 to the boat, so we're going to try and get to 20. And I think the way we're going, we're going to do it easily. So this is number 11, and we've got several hours to go. Look on, it's on his head. Ew. Yeah. So but it was good. Good to go. Um, a bit croaky because I'm knackered, but uh, it was good. It's a hard life fishing every day, isn't it, eh? Must be uh, terrible. I don't go every day. All right, every other day, then. Try to. Yeah. But um, also... Alex and his dad gave me uh, COVID. No, it was not COVID. Bad flu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they um, kept sneezing on me, so I've been ill as well. But uh, yeah, apart from that, we're all right. Second thing I need to talk about is, would you like a cookie? Yes, please. Thank you. I'm going to have that one. Is it? There's not many left, Andy. No, there's a story no. behind these, no. So you just eat that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Um, Do you like it? Yeah, it must sound good anyway. Sound good? Yeah. Over the mic? Yeah. So, just. I. There's a story behind these cookies. Abby, she was what, 21 again? Mm hmm. Yeah. She had a birthday a couple of weeks ago, didn't she? And she invited us out to the, the Whittlesea Curry House with uh, the Peterborough Massive, mm -hmm. Crest of Peterborough. Yeah. Yeah. Are they giving you any any abuse at the minute? Not at the minute. Is that because they're losing? Well, you've got big shoulders at the minute. <laughs> so we're out of the curry house with the Crest mm -hmm. of Crew, and uh, I bought Abby a box of these cookies for her birthday. A bit like this box here, though. It was empty because I had one in the morning, I picked them up from Amy Taylor, who makes them, and I ate the whole bloody box. There was 20 cookies in the box, right? And I thought there was four different ones of four lots of five, if that makes sense. So I thought I'd just have one of the cookies to try them out. Are you listening to me? I am. Yeah, not not sure about this mug, but they are. And uh, I, I ate the whole box, so I felt really guilty. So what I've done now, I bought Abby a second box, which you're going to have to drop her off her house later, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I bought us a box. Right. The problem is, there weren't 20 cookies on this plate, were there? No, there weren't, no. 
No, there's there four left. Five. There was five. He, about three, four people at the gym did have a cookie. Right. But all day I've been, I've had to stop, I had to hide the box just so you could have one. Right. So uh, these cookies hide are... Hide them from yourself or... These cookies are bloody lovely. So if you're in the area, live, live in March, March, Bake House 11, I'll put a link in the description, and you want, um, sh she makes all sorts of cakes. So birthdays, uh, Christmas, Father's Day, Mother's Day, whatever. Bake House 11, 20 cookies, 10 quid. Nice. It's good value, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's good. So we'll be munching these throughout the podcast, and uh, I'll let Alex talk now because I'm going to have a cookie. Oh, great. Lovely. So the topic today was Did going to be red fishing, was it not? It still is. That's good. I'm just checking if you haven't forgotten. Or... It's on my pad down here. Oh, that's good then. But these um, cookies, are... I saved that one because that was one of the nicest ones. Obviously, the way you fish for rudd is uh, far more brutal than what us match anglers would fish for rudd. Bloody hell. Um, this time of year, I think when we go through the match results... Some venues you'll see will be fishing really well, and other venues will be fishing horrendous. And a lot of that is because of daylight hours, um, not because of the weather. I think it's daylight I'm trying hours. trying to eat quietly. Oh, I can't hear you on here, so you're doing all right. Right, it's yeah. probably because I'm rambling on. But, um, so, yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is this time of year the fish are migrating, and... If you're not in the right areas, you're not going to catch. And rudd, this time of year, go on a bit of a feeding frenzy because they're on their way to wherever they hibernate, wherever they winter. What's all we've got on there now? Look? It's a, I thought it was a secret rudd dip then. It's a kinder dip. Oh, right. Okay. Puts different dips in these cookies. Sorry, mate, keep going. I'm, gonna, I'm right. just going to eat this. So, um, obviously, living in the Fens, it is the capital of rudd fishing, whether it be specimen rudd, or big bags of rudd like we see in the Winter League final this year. It was £70. Unbelievable. Free line bread flake? Um, no. But where you go, that pretty much sums up how many's there, doesn't it, really? Um, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, is there's got to be a lot there for, for you to catch them like that. So Feeding frenzy, mate. Yeah. Obviously, the traditional specimen way that Andy's going to speak about is different to the way match anglers because... As match anglers, we get pegged where we're pegged, and the rudder only there for a certain amount of time. And um, basically, you've got to make hay while the sun shines, as the saying goes. Um, very rarely will you catch rudd for the full five hours. If you do, you're on to an absolute winner. Um, just for a simple fact that they're the easiest fish to catch, and then all of a sudden they're gone. If you're not catching them, it's probably because... They've gone out of your swim, they've sussed you out. and They gone. definitely are the easiest fish to catch. Yeah, the easiest and then the hardest at the same time. But match-wise, obviously, whip, waggler, one of the best ways of targeting the rudd, just for the simple fact that you haven't got the pole over their heads. They're quite reactive to noise as well, so quite a heavy float rather than a lighter float sometimes can be better. And big baits, visual baits as well, they're very aggressive. Size four hook? Maybe not as aggressive as that, but um, maybe if you you know if you're a bit of a draw bag bung hole, then maybe you get away with that. But um, I'm not one of them that sort of anglers. But I'd 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 love to draw a peg where you could use a size four. Put it that way, guys. If you can hear this subsidiary noise on the mic, right? Andy has spent a fortune getting what? this audio sorted, and Mr. Bates, yeah, is playing with the mic leads, yeah, and it's making this horrible noise. What, weren't you eating then? Well, I probably was as well, yeah. <laughs> Leave the leads alone. Yeah. DL. I can't help it. They're in the face. <laughs> um, so, yeah, going back to the rudd. You can't get the stuff. Big visual baits. Uh, maggots are obviously prefer preferential. Loose feeding. Hemp can be a good bait for them, you know, just to bring them back in your peg because of the noise. They don't necessarily eat the hemp. but they, they, Hemp? Yeah, they come they come to the noise. A bit like bleak sometimes they they're inquisitive, aren't they? And um Caster? Yeah, I think bread, you know, there's loads of different baits, but in match conditions normally you'll have a little run of them somewhere in your peg. Whether the if they're bigger fish they tend to be further over, away from you. If they're smaller fish they'll be nearer to you. But obviously venues 
March is a prime example, this time of year now. They're all on the way into the town or the marina. Benick will be solid with Rudd. The 20 foot will be solid. Um, we'll come to the Tuesday Club results from Shepson's Bridge or the Sewer Farm. There's been sort of 40, 50, 60 pound bags of Rudd. Dave Cost has been going down pleasure fishing. It's just, at the minute, the system, if you get on them, are absolutely solid with Rudd. Um, and obviously you can talk about your well, that, specimens. Well, I'll, I'll tell you how I find them. Yeah. And there might be some parity mm -hmm. with you match anglers because I a lot of my fishing is all of my all of my fishing is I don't cast until I know I'm on them, right? Regardless of the species. Yeah. Do you hear those airplanes? Yeah. Something's going on in it. Yeah. Podcast time. Israel, wasn't it? Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? So, but so if I'm chub fishing, I'll come casting into likely spots. I haven't mm -hmm. seen the chub necessarily. Probably most of the time not. I haven't. But all my predator fishing on the big waters, I'm using my tech and I'm seeing them. And when I'm rud fishing, I would never cast unless I, I've seen them come up for the free offerings first. Mm -hmm. So when I'm rud fishing, I am literally looking, 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 moving, 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 and never ever like just casting blind. Obviously, you guys. You've got a fish where you, you've drawn, mm -hmm. but do you? Would you say you'll see the rud in your swim if they're there? I think you no, know straight away. Like first chuck, second chuck, you know if they're without in your casting. Swim. Um, sometimes, yes, but they're not because um, they're smaller. I don't think they show themselves as much. Right. Okay. So you're they're talking not about looking to take stuff off the surface and the way we fish. We don't want them to be on the surface. Why not? Why? Yeah. Because anything that don't get eaten goes into the next peg. When you're pleasure fishing, that bread can drift through over different shoals of fish. Whereas if we're surface fishing, as soon as it goes out of your peg, you're knackered. Okay, I didn't explain myself very well. So, hook bait on the mm. surface. Yeah. But I'd imagine something like uh, a rough liquidised bread... Being right. an awesome, well, I know it is, is an yeah. awesome attractor for rudd. Yeah. Because obviously it, you've got bait in different layers mm -hmm. and they will come straight up through it all. Mm -hmm. And they get stimulated. So I've just done what you did. They get really stimulated real strong when you put, if you use liquidized bread and it's really kind of um, coarse. And mm -hmm. you, you sold me a white crumb last year. Yeah. That was basically liquidized bread, didn't you? Mm -hmm. It was something you gave me and I used it for rudd. White crumb, yeah. It was amazing. And I, I just get it fairly damp, put it in quite dry. And when it hit the water, it just went, and the heavier bits would fall down. Yeah. The bits that are very, I, I didn't, obviously you guys riddle it, but I, I think with it all mixed up, you had different densities falling for different uh, rates through the water. And these were rud in January. We're mm -hmm. not talking about warm water fishing. These rud went mental. And I, caught, I had them up to £2.10, clonkers. Mm -hmm. They just went, Poof. but even this time of year, I, I just wonder... Whether, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm right, I'm probably totally wrong, but I wonder if you guys, if you get on a real hot rud peg, you have to use a different style just to maximise that. I bet no one's actually quite done it yet. So you'd want to fish about two to three foot down on a 12 foot peg, and I reckon even off the top or foot down in uh, here on the old course mm -hmm. of the knee, because you want these fish to come up. And the big ones, target the big bait and that's what's really i found really uh important as well the really big ones are the first ones to feed mm -hmm. so the big two two and a half pounders if they're there they will take it straight away mm -hmm. they kind of boss the area and then the little ones about pound jobs pound and a half ones they're coming next and then you end up with all the little runty four to six ounces and there's millions of them mm -hmm. it's kind of like a pecking order yeah and every time i found this is the middle of nowhere when i found them in sticks it, it's bizarre, and you kind of go, "How many bloody rudder are here?" Yeah, there's there's millions in the in the system, isn't there? Yeah, but I wonder if you guys go too negative. I think the thing is with you, you're trying to catch one fish. We want to catch volumes of. But fish. I end up catching so many. Yeah, but when there's anglers on every peg, it's totally different, isn't it? Mm. You know. Yeah, but I'm just wondering because I would imagine people have drawn brilliant peg 
rod pegs in matches, even this week, and haven't maximised their chances because they're probably too focused on fishing on the bottom. Because the other thing I notice about match anglers is they're absolutely obsessed with the depth and the last six inches. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, them rod and stuff like that, you'll still catch them. But you can go to that after you've extracted. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, 100%, yeah. If you, I mean, like the guy that... Um, Jason Cunningham, we won the Whitney final. He's fished sort of half depth. You know, you you adapt to whatever, but you can't sort of set your stall out from the start just to, ta- to target rudd because they don't normally last. No, what I'm saying is you don't set your stall out, but you have to... You have to adapt. The flexibility, yeah. if you get a big a swim with some yeah. big, big rudd in that's, it. You know, that's why Waggler is such a, a, a good method for them because they push away from you, you know, on the drains that don't normally tend to flow you know you can fish halfway between you and the next angler so they'll either go left right or back away from you um so that's why waggler you you can search your peg yeah. and find them yeah if you know what i mean that's why it it's the method to catch them but also you see i know the first cast so what happens so let me explain this when i find the rudd i've normally put in a bit of a little bit of bread it might just be half a slice ripped into three or four pieces. Yeah. I have to make sure that my hook bait is made up and I'm ready to cast as I put these out because that monster comes up two or three times for the free offering. And if I haven't got my hook bait on its nose, mm-hmm. it will have two or three goes of these bits of bread and then it will have gone. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, ah, it's, it's happened. It's just a coincidence. It's happened to me too many times. And I spoke to Andy Field, Ray's son, you know, we had at the phone mm-hmm. maker. He's done a lot of rod fishing. And I mentioned to him, he went, yeah, so I'm thinking in a match, right at the beginning. Oh, obviously, yeah, because you catch them, they're, they're there and then they're yeah, gone. Yeah, they're gone because the big yeah. ones will go straight away and then you're left with the smaller ones. There's millions of smaller ones. And I wonder how many match anglers are that flexible that they can read the water when they get to the peg and go, actually, I've got two or three clonking rud here. I need to try and catch at least one because it's going to get me two pound in the net mm-hmm. or pound and a half before within the first cast. But to do that, you can't use a size 20 hook and a little maggot. You need to no. use a big bait because it's got to be something that actually gets its attention mm-hmm. and you have to be aggressive with the approach. So that's what I do. I'm quite, I suppose my style of fishing is very aggressive, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Big bit of bread flake, size four hook. Aggressive. Shark fishing. <laughs> but it but it works. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. And I, I, want, I bet one or two people are probably doing this. They've kept it very quiet as well. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's certain matches a year where if they're bruddering your peg, you can set your stall out slightly differently. You know, you know you're going to catch for an hour or so on them big rud and then back to your roach fishing or skimmer fishing or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Be interesting. So, in the comments, guys, if anyone's got a scenario where they've done that or they know somebody who has done something, because it's not the old, the old boy, the Ivan Marks and that lot when they're bream fishing, they were quite reactive, weren't they? Yeah. Doing that because they didn't have bream in their swims all the time. But it'd be interesting to see if anyone's kind of um, got a handle on the road because I think over the next few years they, they're going to really dominate. I think the drains are only going to get more weedier, clearer. Perch and rudd are going to thrive. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. So if you're targeting the rudd, mm-hmm. what is your go to? You've got the waggler set up first? Uh, well, yeah, obviously, as a match hand, you have kitchen sink set up don't you so wagglers normally the most productive uh whip waggler can work as well especially with the skim on the surface you're in and out you're striking sort of you're not making you, you don't miss as many bites um that's what we filmed a couple of years ago wasn't it you're using yeah, the whip yeah. waggler and you're using the, the, the traditional Basically, waggler. yeah 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 that sort of start, style of fishing um and just being aggressive with your feed when they're there you know um, make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, and uh, do you think the rud switch off when the water gets really cold? Very good question. I there's no way there's that many rud in the river, and then all of a sudden you don't catch one for three months. There's you think someone would foul hook one or something like that. There's that many there. So I honestly f- believe that they they go in the marinas or they. They will winter somewhere that we don't know. Um, 
been there used to be a load of ruddy magpie in one of the lakes at our place years ago and you'd fish one side of the island and not get a bite and then fish the other side of the island and get one every single chuck i just think they get really tightly shoaled and that's where they stay yeah yeah um so i miles miles i've just realized that i turned my mic up and not yours I need a producer. That's what we need. Yeah. Right. Interesting stuff. So if people got some ideas about their rod fishing, let us know. Right. Okay. Shall we get on to match results? Or did you want to show us some of the stuff first? No, no. No, match results is good. Um, we can sort of cover a few bits for that, can't we? Yeah. Right. We're going to do ours last. Let's get straight into our... We've got four presenters now. So I'm going to try and do in the order that I set it up. But I can't remember because I did it earlier. Probably be um, Ben first. Richard Chave first. Oh, is it? Yeah. Richard Chave. And he's on holiday. He is. Chilling, isn't he? Yeah. Then it was Simon. Fancy going on holiday during the Winter League. Oh, don't blame him. Then it was Simon Mottram. Mottram. Then it was Steve. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Ben. Ben Taylor. Yeah. So, so Richard does the South West. Yeah. I think they call that Thames Valley Winter League. So he's all round Dorset in that area. Uh, Steve's doing South East. Yep, Avon Valley. Um, ben Taylor's doing? Uh, North East. So that's Barnsley, Osset, Darwood Dons. Is, that's a big winter league, that one. That's a good winter league. Yeah, and we've got also, it's Simon, isn't it? He's doing Midlands and North West. Yeah, North West. So... I think he fishes for Dreadnought Northwest, but he's doing some results from the Isaac Walton Winter League, which is like on the canals all around that area. There's a big canal scene there. Um, so, yeah, a bit cool. of variation. Cool. Right, well, we'll drop that in now, and then we'll get on to the local match results mm -hmm. around here. Hi there, a bit of a different flavour this week. Uh, that's because I'm in Portugal on holiday. However, I've had the uh, results sent to me by my good friend Gary Effridge, teammate. Um, so the Upper Thames Winter League practice match for the second round was fished on the Upper Bristol Avon at Chippenham and Malksham. Seems like Chippenham was the best place to be. Um, Sean Townsend was top of the 57 anchors who fished. Sean drew peg eight on the upper bits of uh, Chippenham, the shallows they called it, he caught on Wagner and Corn. Apparently had 10 chub between a pound and a half and two pounds and lots, lots of bits and pieces. Small fish are very prolific up there, it can be a bit of a nuisance, hence the reason I imagine Sean fish corn on the hook. Next to Sean was Phil Bendel from Dawa Gorn League. Phil had 18 pounds, 14 ounces. In third place, uh, and back to Melchior for these results, was Mark Treasure from Dawa Gorn League. Mark drew the downstream end peg, peg 57, and had 16 pounds, 10 of roach. Next to him was Gary Effridge, a teammate from uh, Garblino Blackmore Vale. Gary had 14 pounds 14. He started on the whip, had a few fish, it ended up catching some reasonable roach. And then the last weight uh, in the frame, the fifth was uh, Tony Randall, who everybody calls Elvis because he's a pub singer and apparently he's really good. Um, Elvis caught 12 pounds four ounces of roach on the hemp after taking some. Uh, advice from Gary apparently in the in the week so uh, he's had a nice day so that basically sort of um, rounds off these week's results I'll be back in Blodge next week and be fishing the match hopefully so cheers from me in Portugal oh hi there um, my name's Simon Mottram you might recognize me from Canal Masters which uh, me and my partner Mandy run um, Alex and Andy from the podcast have very kindly asked me if I'd like to do some local match results to me every week. So I've picked the, which one I've picked today is the Isaac Walton Winter League, which there's 11 teams of six in it, and it's in its 15th year run by Alan Round. And we've been on the Shops Union Canal at Church Eaton today. Uh, it's been a lovely day. Obviously, we all thought it would fish well with it being warm, but it's not fished very well at all. And I've noticed some of the results around the country not been so good today. Um, so leading the way today on the day, Perry Fellers um, from Team Eclipse. He's been the end peg of the match in the wood, F15, and he's stolen the match. He's had £15.2, all skimmers and roach, odd bream I think as well. Uh, knowing Pez, he'd have probably caught him on casters. He likes to fish the caster, Perry does. Um, 
Myself was second. I was on Peggy eight. I've had eight, eight, eight. Um, fishing for Drenna Northwest. I've had a lucky bream the last half an hour, which has really rocketed me up the section. So I fished for it. I've tried to catch another big fish after that, and I've actually had a chub after that. So I fluked a bream and caught a chub fishing. You know, fishing for bigger fish. So it's I've been really fortunate with that to be honest. But I'll take anything to be honest. Lately, I've had a bit of a bad run. So uh, third on the day, the Smiler. For those who know him, Steve Fogel, Drenna Northwest. He's been on peg F1. It's not been an end peg. It's the section that's followed on from mine. He's had 5.82, third in the match, fishing for Drenna Northwest. Fantastic result there, to be honest. I didn't catch a lot around him like. So fourth in the match has been Richard Guest. Never out of the money, Richard, to be fair. And I you know, I rate him as one of the best on the canals round, certainly round here anyway. And he does well wherever he goes, to be fair. He's been on he's been in my section again, E4. He's had four thirteen, which is a he's had a good perch of pound, and then he's topped it up with squat fish. Incidentally, these weights would you know normally they wouldn't even dream about framing with these when these weights. It's just fish really really hard today for whatever reason. Um, and fifth in the match, Dean Williams. He fishes for Census Lifestyle Red, um, and he's had four pound four. So a really really difficult day. Uh, teams on the day, uh, Maver Midlands nineteen points. So out of a six man, you know, six in a team, eleven in a section. That's a good score on the day. Our and Northwest team was second with twenty two. Uh, Lifestyle Red twenty seven, and Cadence Super Team on the day twenty nine, and that now brings the league. Uh, Maver, it's only round two. This is what Maver have only had thirty penalty points. Us, we're on 50, John Northwest, Cadence Super Team 65, uh, Census Lifestyle Red 72. Incidentally, this league, it's all on community live points, so it's good. You know, you can you think you're out of it, and you can have a really, really good last round and really rock it up the points. So it's not on match points, it's on total t section points for the whole league. So it just keeps it interesting to the end. Um and that's it for this week. Okay, over and out. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. Hope you had a great weekend in the sun, catching plenty for most, hopefully. Um, here's the results for the second round of the Avon Valley Winter League. This was a split round. This was held uh, on Gold Valley, five sections, with three on Main Gold and two on the middle, and the other five sections on the Basingstoke Canal. Goes without saying, you could nominate your anglers beforehand and no prizes for guessing where all the top weights come from. Uh, first on the day was Paul Gibbo Gibson. Well done, Paul. Brilliant right weight and he's been in cracking form at gold a lot, all summer, to be quite honest. Now, Paul's drawn peg 12 on main gold and he took a total of £126 uh, carp, which fell to uh, method feeder and pellet wag. Second was Pete Franklin, Apollo Anglin, well done Pete, with £104, 8 ounces. And third went to the old Flint dog, Anthony Flint, Census Oakwood, with £103, 8 ounces, well done Ant. Top weights on the canal was Vince Camelair NPEG, sorry Vince, uh, £21, 6, cracking weight, it's, it's a bream to over £4 on the chop worm and pole, more late on. Uh, his, his pegs turned on. He was the, uh, just on the turning bay um, at Checkers um, by the cottage. Second was Mark Carrington, uh, £5.7, Apollo Angling. And third was Peter Kay with £5.6, Drennan Borden. Teams on the day. Uh, very well done to Colmic Target Fish UK, Sussex. Uh, coming out on top with 58 points. Second was Drennan Borden with 54. Third was Apollo with 49. Fourth, a little bit of a shock on the day, was Darwood Dawkins on 47. Uh, fifth was, let's get this right, Reeve Homestores with 47. And sixth on the day was Census Oakwood on 44. So the league to date, um, it's still a very long way to go. Uh, after two rounds, as I said, you've got Drennan Borden on three points, 
Colmic Target Fish UK Sussex on four. Daiwa Dawkin on six. Apollo on eight. Census Oakwood on ten. Okay, so we haven't got around now for two weeks. So tight lines, have a good couple of weeks for more at board and angling. So this weekend was the first weekend um, of our Eastern Region Winter League. We've been fortunate enough this year to have another team join our Winter League, which means four teams now qualify for the Winter League final down on the uh, drains and decoy, which we all look forward to every year. This week, first round was on the Erin Calder Canal, starting at Gould Top and going all the way through to the Raw Creef Narrows, for those who know the canal. Um, good turnout, obviously, with having now having 10 teams in our league of eight. It's an 80-peg match every weekend all the way through for six uh, six rounds. So we look forward to it. So um, starting up at Gould Top, um, A section, which is closest to the Gould Marina, for those that know the, the canal. Uh, first in that section was John Deakin from Daiwa Doncaster with £9.13. ounces. Second in that section was John Goodwin from Browning Osset uh, with £9.04. ounces. Next section, the good thing about gold is they're all pegged in a line for, uh, I think it's six sections in a line there. And then there's one in the marina and one on the narrows. So yeah, so the next section down was B section. First in that section was Pat Daly, Browning Osset, £13.00. Second in that section was Eddie Bryden, uh, Barnsley, £12.12. 12 ounces. C section, next section again. First in that section was Mick Lodge, Browning Osset, £12.10. 10 ounce. Second in that section was Steve Addy from Selby with £7.15. 15 ounce. Next section, moving on, D section. First in that section was Pete Kitwood with Bait Tech North, £15.13. 13 ounce. And second in the section... Frankie Jam and Jelly, Barnsley, £10.14. Ounce. Next section, E section. So first in that section was Dave Lloyd, Scunthorpe, £26.13. Second in that section was Pete Duffy, Preston North West, £11.10. Ounces. Big shout out to Dave Lloyd there because um, the canal actually ran quite a lot of the weekend. Uh, when the Aaron Calder wants to go, it, it goes. And uh, he's drawn a very narrow peg there, what neck's in. Um, at Goul, and I think by all accounts, after a couple of hours and it absolutely tramming, I don't think he had the gear to hold bottom, so he's chucked bomb and lobby and caught some, well, caught twenty six pound thirteen a chub and big perch. So fair play to him, fair play to him there. Um, next section moving on was F section. That's the last section at Goul before it moves on. So. Danny Challoner won that section off the end peg, I believe, uh, with £10.12. Ounces. And second in that section were Tony Howard from Daiwa Doncaster with £7.12. Ounces. Now, the next section is the Rawcliffe Marina, which anyone who knows um, the Aaron Call the Canal knows Rawcliffe Marina can be very prolific. And as it turned out again, there were some skimmers to catch. The ever faithful Peg D, which I don't think hasn't won a match for about the last two years, but You've got to still catch him and Jack Turner from Preston Northwest drew Peg D and caught £37.7 ounces. I'm assuming on a feeder because everyone catches him on a feeder in that peg. And second in the section uh, second in that section and second in the match was Steve Allinson from the next peg with £30.9 ounces. So safe to say there were definitely some fish in them couple of pegs there. On to H section now, and that's the Rawcliffe Narrows for anyone again who knows the canal. Uh, first in that section was Steve Bontoff from Scunthorpe with £14.5 ounces. And second in that section was, well, none other than league runner and all-round top guy John Waterhouse from Selby with £14.4 ounce. Now, they were next pegged to each other. So, to have £14.5 ounce and £14.4 ounce, that's been a battle next peg. So, there's your section results from your from eight sections. And as you can tell, it's it's fished its socks off, to be fair, because the... We're in a funny time here now on the canal where it can be feast or famine. When they want them go, they go. Um, but yeah, that's that's your section results. Now, teams on the day. This is where it gets interesting. Uh, Browning Osset won the day uh, with 28 points, which is always nice. I like to uh, we, we like to win. Uh, Dio Doncaster come second with 30 points. So again, close, only two points in it. Third was Preston North West with 34 points. Fourth was Drennan Barnsley Blacks with 34 points 
but I think Preston Northwest beat them on section count back. Uh, fifth was Scunthorpe, 36 points. Sixth was Baytech North with 44 points. Uh, sixth. Seventh was Wakefield, which is the new uh, team that's entered the league this year, and fair play to them. They've come straight in and come seventh, so 53 points. Uh, Selby were eighth with 58 points. Tricast Calder were ninth with 65 points, and Walton was our tenth with 66 points. So we're going into the second round this weekend, which is on the Stainforth and Kiwi Canal at Thorn. Seems to be a lot of fish in the system at the minute, so touch wood, we all get a day's fishing, which the good thing uh, about the staying for Kiwi Canal at Thorn is it's, uh, it usually can get a day's fishing no matter where you draw. Um, and then that leaves the league standings, obviously with it being after one round, with Osset first, Don second, Preston Northwest third, Barnsley fourth, and Scunfort eight fifth. That makes you top five. So it should make it very interesting. We've now got a round at Thorn uh, on the staying for Kiwi, Two rounds at Holcroft, which is silverfish only. And then the last two rounds are back on the Stave and Kiwi Canal at Thorn. So, awesome fish catching matches. And let's see how it goes. Good luck, guys. Tight lines. Are you hot? Yeah, with these earphones on. What? I feel like I've got a hat on. You have got a hat No, on. like a... Dappy hat. So, you've got thermally lined headphones. Oh, is that why it is then? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant effort, guys. So thank you for your match results. We thought it'd be quite nice to try and expand the podcast. So hopefully we'll get um, people from different regions listening as well. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And our plan is to get um, all the four guys on independently, one at a time, obviously not the same podcast, mm -hmm. and we'll do um, have them on as guests as well. Yeah. That'd be good yeah. as well. Almost the tech works. Yeah, that? Good results from all the leagues. And obviously Dorkin coming fourth and Barnsley coming fourth just shows that they don't win everything, doesn't it? Just most things. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Right, so we'll get on to our local match results. And after last week, obviously, the... Um, Grampgate. The, after Grampgate, the Lincolnshire boys obviously watched the podcast because Chris Hodson yeah. has messaged me. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. And um, oh, Derek Skinner. Yeah. You messaged as well. Did you know Good. he's written a book? No. Oh. About motorcycling? No. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's coming out soon. Right, so let's get to... I'll do the Wednesday results for the um, Spilsby Open, and then Alex is going to do the Sunday ones. Mm -hmm. So we've got the, Mos the boston Sleaford area, Spilsby AA Open on the River Steeping. This was Wednesday the 4th of October. 13 people fished. First was Dave Ashmore with £9.01. Second was Steve Baker with £8.12. Ian... Schoolboy era. Didn't put my phone on silent, did I? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. No. I wonder if we get a copyright claim with Simple Minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it all goes off, doesn't it? Yeah. At least yeah. you know it's live. It's not live. Well, yeah, we don't. <laughs> so it's 01945. Whiz Beach number, is it? Yeah. That's, I know what that is. Right, so where did I get? Second was Steve Baker with £8.12. Ian Benton was third with £8.01. And uh, Simple Minds were fourth. No, Alan Slater was fourth with £7.06. The, the river was showing good form after the weed cutting boats had been through. Lots of bites to be had. Good perch, tench being caught. Oh, perch. Why does it go down there? The next match is Wednesday the 11th. All welcome. Um, please. Which was yesterday. It's today. Oh, yeah, so going out. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, but we'll get these for next week. Um, please see the East Links Match Anglers Facebook page for latest info. Also, if anyone's interested in fishing the Winter League starting at the end of October, please, again, refer to the East Links Facebook page for all info. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, Alex, you're going to do the Boston District? Yeah. Also, also so week. on the Barger drain, uh, Windsor Bank, they were on. Uh, poor old Cookie spent loads of time cutting pegs out in the week and getting it ready for everyone and um, well it uh, was pretty tough um, match winner was Danny West with £1.14 I think he was near the bridge so um, they weren't taking rod off the top like I suggested no I don't no. think this is where I'm getting at that the fish haven't quite migrated mm. in certain areas um, having others uh, runner up 
from the MPEG was Andy Dillamore with one pound thirteen and a half. I like them half ounces; they're pretty good. How? Oh. Uh, and then third was Ryan Cook with one pound one. So tough, tough day for the Boston lads, but I'm sure they'll be on the fish next round. When Do you know what they were catching? Um, bream. No, <laughs> no, not very big fish. <laughs> It's just bits and bats, as they say. So um, hopefully you guys will find a few next week. Um, also, Lincolnshire, Tidgort, uh, they had their club match at Main Road, which hasn't been fishing well of late. Uh, winner That's was... technically Cambridgeshire. Well, what about 50 metres? It's Norfolk, isn't it? That's outside the river. Uh, anyway, it's in the middle of nowhere. So... Um, Match winner was Gary Hardy with 13.7, Peter Billington £7.6, and then Andy Lawrence £6.3. So not as good a weights as the week before, but still some nice good stamp roach and a few tench kicking about. Um, so we'll move now to sort of back more this central area. You've got the Whittle CAA Saturday match at Whittlesey Dyke which is at the back of the warehouses or Carpet City. It's got about a million different names. Um, 118 John Taylor. He only had 5,000 fish today um, for £9.10. Uh, Runner-up was Andy Lawrence again, £8.11. Mark Barron was third. I mean Steve Smith, Windmill Stiff. Oh, no, it is Mark Barron, £7.02. And then they're back on Cockbank this week. So What was the in joke there? Because I didn't get that one. Well, I called the wrong last week. I called right. Windmill Steve out as third, but Mark Barron was third. And you, you got that. And he pointed it out, so I think he, uh, yeah. For third. Yes. Um, so the Cock Bank this loser, week. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cock Bank this week, which we were talking about venues for Rudd. That is absolute prime Rudd venue. Um, Ramsey and District. So this is another prime example of the fish not being in the in the venue or the stretch. Ian Farrow won the match with five pound ten, which was a tench. Runner up was Ken Taylor, three pound three, and then Paul Kilby, three pound two. So yeah. I'm not, gonna buy clips for these not, bikes. Not happening. Uh what about you not not touching the lead. <laughs> and then <laughs> so then we'll move on to um Cambridge Carp Cabin, which are obviously based Sawston, Cambridge area. That's new. Yeah. Uh, they run quite a lot of matches on the Little Ooze at Little Fetford, or the main Ooze at Little Fetford. Um, they've been having some fantastic series on there. And recently they've been fishing the Old West at Holt Bridge. Do you know where that is? So if we start at Erif, it's right. a long way down, is it? I ain't got a clue where it is, and nor's my dad. Well, so, so here, if that's the old west, it starts there. The old west starts at. Um, well, it finishes there. Well, is there? Yeah, yeah. Where the hundred foot and everything yeah. starts. Yes, yeah. so yeah. it goes from there and runs into the the cam, I suppose, doesn't it? So, I'm not hundred percent sure, but obviously there's a boatyard there. Um, I'm sure if you get in touch with Cambridge Cart Cabin, they'll be more than happy to help you out. But match winner was Jason O'Dell with twenty six six. On the whip and long pole, mainly rudd and roach. Size four hook, Red Flake, I hope. Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, Mark Fitzjohn, 18.9. Dan Porter, 17.10. And I think most of them caught double figures. So, fantastic match, really. Um, another brilliant venue that they've found for some good matches. So, uh, brilliant. Well done, Ashley, there. And then, obviously, the main East Midlands Winter League round two. So, back to Littleport we go. Um, yeah, it was very, very close. Very well, hold on. Close. Let, me just put, let me just set the scene because you weren't allowed to practice. You weren't allowed to practice. No, you weren't allowed to practice this no. week. No. And last week, if I remember rightly, where the weights came from, Ely Beat. Yeah. Yeah, Ely Beat. The weights did come from Ely Beat, but there was the Littleport fish loads better this week. Did it? Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, everyone at Littleport <coughs> is all in a row, whereas with Ely Beat, there's sections dotted here, there, and yeah. everywhere, so there's lots of MPEG, so that's one of the reasons why it looks better on paper, but as a match length, Littleport is perfect, really. Perfect. Uh, match winner was Paul Cowan, 
26 pound free. Rudd? Nope. Perch. All perch? Perch. Yeah. All perch? Mainly perch. I think he told our bank runner he wasn't catching roach, so he went on his perch line and caught one a bung for a little while. So, fantastic catch, £26 free. So, that was above Sandor Bridge. Uh, who was your bank runner? John Price. No, hold on. You said runner. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Bank Walker was John Price. What about... I thought your bank runner last week was a guy who lost his teeth. Yeah, yeah, he was He was this week, but he weren't running that or walking that so section. How, how are his teeth? Um, well, this week, um, when he went to collect Steve Winters' money again. No, not yeah, again. Not again. Not again. <laughs> yeah. Um, Abby Kendall, um, donated a gum shield to him. <laughs> Are we so, all going to get a picture? Did you get a picture of it? I think Abby has, yeah. Um, if I get it so poor time. old Phil's now got a gum shield when he has to collect his money. Or Steve Winters' oh, money. Oh, perfect. So this, we've got a time limit to get this out tonight. Yeah. So I'm going to have to message you in a bit to get me... Well, if I can get the picture, I'll stick it in here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was quite funny. It was a good bit of banter. Um, so, yeah, Paul Cowan won the match. Runner-up was 118 John Taylor. He had £22. Right, which... hold on a minute. Are you stocking new fish counters? Yeah, no, they do a triple must, one now. This must be broken. No, they do a triple one. So, so once he... Bottoms that one out, he starts on the next one. So he can get up to a million fish now. But well, why don't you just give him an abacus? Uh, you could just slide beads. <laughs> He's of that age. He knows how to use an abacus. Yeah. He yeah. did the results this week, so they should be perfect being an ex maths teacher. Right? Yeah, maths, well, maths, maths teachers, in my experience, right, are very clever people. They can tell you formula of how to get a rocket. A rocket. My old maths teacher at school could tell us how to work out the thrust a rocket would need to break through the Earth's gravitational pull, but he couldn't add up numbers. Oh, right. So you might be screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Particularly... Well, I like your theory there. Um, third overall was Steve Goodrum, uh, 1913. That was, again, from Sandal section. John Taylor was at Adelaide. Um, consisted of a tench and a perch and bits and bobs. Um, and then fourth was Damien Green, Damo, with £18 free. He was on permanent peg 51. Um at Littleport, which has been a really good area. Fifth, no, sorry, he was on permanent peg 50 and 51's EM peg, which was James Collison, who had 17, 15. So great fish in there, roach and skimmers. Um, teams on the day. So winners again which, with 28 points again was Matrix Dynamite Image. So they've now won both rounds. So they've had perfect start. Um, so you're going to get you're getting thrashed. We're behind, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're, like the story goes, never bag early. Well, they're, they're not just bagging early; they're just bagging up. Yeah. Um, then runners up are us and hot rods with. No, oh, sorry. Hang on, on. We've got a little hang on, hang on, a little on. grin. Then hang on, hang a little on. grin. Hang on. Did you see that? Everybody? Second on the day was Daiwa tackle and baits with twenty nine points. Not Site. Who? Or Newcastle. Newcastle. We'll come on Sitter. to that later. Well, the Sheikh of Piddley has yeah. bought, bought his team. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's not bad, is it? Fresh air. Tip to go around. Oh, um, third was Hot Rods with 30 points. And um, I think they changed the mix from um, Seal 3000 to something Bake Decky this week. Uh, it was Peterborough with 33. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think they turned up this week. So well done, Peter, bro. Um, fourth was it was fourth. Oh no, Peter must have been fourth. Sorry, Peter were fourth. Yeah. Fifth was I'm gonna say Mark One White, then Stan J, and last one Mark One Black. Um, have they sorted out the sponsors yet? So have uh, have Hot Rods got um, always? Yeah, they're still Brown in Hot Rods at the minute. But after Christmas, year. no, I presume they will have. But the boys, won't it all? Boys. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Boys hot rods. Yeah. Um, league overall, image on two. Hey, uh, Kai's, Kai's going to sponsor them. He's, he's that rich. Yeah. The, um, the Jerome hot rods. Jerome hot rods. Um, so, league overall, image two, us and hot rods five, Mark one nine and Pete row ten. Um, so, yeah, two rounds in. Another banana skin to come at Houndall this week. And... Uh, 
Yeah. So are uh, you practicing this week at Handel? No. Oh, yeah, practice match Sunday, but no yeah. one's going in the week, yeah. Yeah, so it's practice match Sunday. Um, obviously, Chip Shop Award. Oh. There was quite a few. That well, hold on, it. because God has got it last week. Well, he, he, he do could we, get it again this do week. Do we have a photograph? Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So I'll stick that mm, in here. Whenever. Yeah. Got um, it, got it. It must have gone to his head because he got Chip Shop again this week. Oh, he's done it again. Oh, mate. Yeah, he had a bit of a drama, did old Godfrey. Um, did he forget to have his pint of milk? Or? I'm not sure. Maybe his routine was upset. I'm not sure. Um, so Goddard could have got it. Andy Ellis could have got it. Paul Borden could have got it. He got chip shot. Um, but I'm going to have to give it to Triple S, Super Simon Smith from Hot Rods. Um, yeah, you got chip shot this week, Simon. So when you come back off holiday... You'll be getting your T-shirt, don't worry. Why are you picking on him? What's the reason? There must be a reason. Just because it's Simon, isn't it? Triple S. So, um, yeah, he'll get it this week. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, how did my match go? Oh, you haven't mentioned... I says this is a unique one. You haven't mentioned yourself. No, I don't like mentioning myself. All I'm going to say is every ounce counts. You know. So you're obviously beating somebody by an ounce. Well... Or several people. I sort of highlighted the fact half ounces earlier on in the match oh, results. No way. Have yeah. you paid the scalesman again? No. Again? <laughs> again. What do you mean again? But you know, like, oh. yeah, do, you yeah. know, do you know who I am? Yeah. I'm the shake, this shake way. of Piddly. Take Every that. half oh. ounce oh. counts. I just dropped way. a £20 note. Maybe it's yours, sir. Yeah. That came out your pocket, yeah. scalesman. Yeah, yeah. It's not pipe lure fishing here. Um, so, yeah, poor old Matt Barker. It's the match of his life he did, and I beat him by half ounce. I bet he's phoned you every day, hasn't he? Oh, he was, oh, cool. he was savage. He went home from the results early and all sorts. Did he? Yeah. Did he have a little strop? Yeah, he did. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. He had a little strop. I was, and then I beat him by half ounce, and then literally Joy Boy, the biggest like, big fish expert in the world, he had a tension, a uh, big Billy again, like normal, um, and I beat him by an ounce and a half. So the rub of the green was definitely with me this week. Um, Just give me a bit of detail. Where, where did you draw? What did you catch? Uh, I drew the epicenter of uh, shit, <laughs> um, right in the middle of Little Port, Peg Thirty Two, which can be a good big fish area. But obviously, team match is a bit different. You have to sort of. Get your head down and catch what you can. <laughs> Be um, didn't catch nothing for two and a half hours. I literally probably had a pound and a half of fish. Which, you know why? Didn't free line bread flake, mate. Well, obviously. You destroyed yeah, it if you did that. Should have started on that. Yeah. Should have started on that. Um, I think Tom Moretti on the next peg did, and he obviously caught straight away. Um, Tom next to me had a brilliant start. Balled it, went in, caught. I balled it, went in. Uh, uh, have I plumbed up properly? Um, had a very frustrating two and a half hours of catching holly rough, an odd roach, uh, bitterlin, um, rud, little tiny little rud, little perch. Um, and then out of nowhere, the fish just arrived. They come from the right, and my section went from a right, so I was always playing catch up. Um, I weighed 11, 11, four and a half. Half was very important. It certainly was very important. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, frustrating match. Very close. Um, Where would you come in your section? I was second. You've got this skill of coming second in your section. I've noticed that. <sighs> Don't know about that. Frustrated that I couldn't catch from the start. That's yeah. what's really annoyed me. And the fact that the bloke next to me is catching one a bunk at the yeah. start. And then he obviously had a quiet spell, but... I don't know. That's that venue sometimes. Can uh, brick walls in pegs, that's what we say. Well, it's river fishing, isn't it? Yeah. but well, um, It's a drain, but it's a It was bit cracking two rounds. You know, you can't fault it. Good venue. Um, deep. Technical as well. You know, you've got to, you've got to get it right, but it can be very yeah. hit and miss. But we'll move on to uh, Oundle this week. 
and uh, see what happens. That'd be good because uh, if you guys could tell me where the pike are coming out, that'd be handy. Because I am taking pike. Some, I'm taking somebody um, angling coaching on Monday. Oh, yeah, we're going to the River Thames. Oh, he lives local to the Thames. Right. So obviously, I don't, I won't guide. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. But I'll, my whole philosophy is coaching and mm-hmm. help people get better within their chosen mm-hmm. uh, species they want to catch. So yeah, we're going River Thames, so that'd be great. So I'll, I'll feed back to that next week. But um, if anybody fancies a day coaching with me, it's going to cost you a lot of money because I'm bloody awesome. <laughs> but we might go to Houndle. Because well, you boys will get piked out. I had a walk along it today and it looks perfect for pike. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it crystal clear? It's clear. Yeah. Just looks pike central. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll get the load out because on the Thames, I've just got the load down from Simon. Mm-hmm. Well, they've been catching and getting Ooh, love out. you, Simon. And <laughs> so on. Aldo, I'll do the same. Yeah. Yeah. I fancy getting a big one out of there. But you say you had a big pike take your roach, it's about three pounds. I don't know. You never, you never see them anyway. Just pull and pull. But two choices, the fish comes in or you... Yeah. But I thought that might be quite good fun to do that. Yeah. yeah. Right, brilliant. So we've had loads of match results. Thank you, everybody, who's contributed. That's really, yeah. really good. Thank you to our guys all around the country. Keep sending those in. Um, hopefully, we've got a few new listeners from different parts of the country. That would be great. So, you know, let us know in the comments uh, what you'd like us to do. Um, anything that you like us like that we do do. Do we do? Do 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 do. How you catch your rod will be really interesting. And I would love one or two match anglers to get in touch who actually have a different approach and just say, yeah, I try this and it works. Maybe not a size four. Maybe a size six. I doubt many match anglers own a size six. That's scary, would not it? Mm. They get the packet and go, did I steal your thunder about the teeth? Did I mention it too early? What? No, no. Or the gum shield? No, that's fine. Yeah. Did it have tackle and baits on it? No, it had uh, gold teeth on it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so hopefully we can get a picture of that as well. Anything to add, buddy? No. Um... That's it, really. Cool, cool. Right, we'll wrap it up. This is the end of uh, episode two. We'll see you next week, and hopefully on Wednesday, mind you, anything can happen in Pagey World. Yeah, it might be Friday next week, who knows. But mm. hopefully we'll get the see uh, episode three out next Wednesday. So we're going to wrap this one up and say, see you next week. See you next week.